There's a well-known song called The Old Dun Cow about a pub that mysteriously burnt down and how the locals raided the booze in the cellars led by a man called Brown. They refused to let in the firemen and kept on shouting McIntyre, though who he was is never explained, nor what he had to do with the fire. So this monologue was written, not by me, but to explain it and cast out all doubt. So if you sit back and listen, it'll tell you what the song's all about. Don't let them in till it's all mopped up. Somebody shouted McIntyre. McIntyre. And we all got blue blind paralytic drunk when the old dumb cow caught fire. You'll have heard of a pub called the old dumb cow. Now just ashes and cinders are fear of the efforts of Brown in the cellars below to salvage the whiskey and beer. How bravely they fought off the firemen and called for McIntyre. Now I can reveal why they wanted him because it was him what had started the fire. Man, the old dumb cow was a bit of a dump with an atmosphere dismal and glum. But it did have one thing in its favour, a back room where the folkies could come. The decor had once been a rich shade of cream, now mellowed to dull brownish black. And to reach it, you had to climb three flights of stairs out through a yard at the back. There was one naked bulb in the ceiling, no bar, no loos and no heat. There'd been crisps on the floor since the Second World War and not one single comfortable seat. So it was ideal for folk singers and musicians could really let rip. And they gathered each week on a Thursday to give all their egos a trip. All except McIntyre, who did nothing. So the rest never bothered with him. And he sat all alone in a corner, though he paid twice as much to get in. How he longed to be like the others and win acclamation and smiles. But his voice, when he sang, made all the dogs howl and attract every moggy for miles. He tried every manner of instrument too, but folk covered their ears in dismay. When he took his harp to a party, nobody asked him to play. Till one fateful weekend at a festival, the others had gone for the night, to flog a dead horse round the district or perform some such old pagan rite. He went out to watch the procession, clowns and dancers, stilt walkers too, and he wished he could learn something clever to show the rest what he could do. When along came a man with unusual skills and the crowd were enthralled and impressed as he blew great big flames down his nostrils and played them all over his chest. Well, next day, McIntyre at the library found on a dark, dusty shelf a book all about fire eating in the section called Teach It Yourself. One or two pages were missing or singed, but he thought he would learn what he could because when there's not many experts at summer, you don't have to be terribly good. And at the next club night he meant to perform, though he'd not quite perfected his act. He'd learnt what he could of the theory, it was only the practice he lacked. The room was quite full when at last he stood up and told them what it was about. He positioned himself in front of the door, in case anyone tried to get out. He stripped to the waist with a flourish, as he needed to do for the stunt. He tried it once with his vest on and burnt a big hole in the front. Well, the audience watched in amazement. They thought it was some kind of joke when he shoved a torch under his armpit and all the hair went up in smoke. He tried to pretend it was part of the act and to prove it was all safe as houses, he made the crowd gasp when for a finale, shoved a torch down the front of his trousers. A strong smell of singeing at once filled the air. The sensation brought tears to his eyes. 
He wished half that page he hadn't been missing. A six-inch flames shot from his flies. But he grinned bravely and gritted his teeth as he played the flames over his torso. The blisters stood out on his arms and his chest and down below too, only more so. But he had his moment of glory when the audience hollered for more. And though it was risky, he had one more trick to do if he got an encore. With a mouthful of petrol and one little torch, great flames he proceeded to throw. His moustache and his beard went to blazes and he barbecued half the back row. Well, one thing led to another and the flames, they grew higher and higher. Till it being only across the backyard, the old dung cow itself caught fire. The rest of the story I'm sure you all know. How the fire put paid to the pub. And they say McIntyre's looking around for floor spots in some other club. You'll know him at once by his blisters. His body's hairless and scarred. He talks in a very high treble when the front of his trousers is charred. Please, walk, heed this warning I'll give you. Should he come round there to inquire, let him in for half price, but don't put him on, or he could set your damn place on fire. Oh, there was Brown upside down, mopping up the whiskey on the floor. Booze, booze, the firemen cried as they came knocking at the door. Don't let them in till it's all mopped up. Somebody shouted McIntyre. And we all got blue like paralytic drunk when the old dung cow caught fire.